Hello, everyone. How are you all? Who goes I'm first? Good, I'm Grant, thanks. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, we're good. Uh, I so this is Mark. The listeners are, but I'm good, thank you. I was. Um, <laughs> so, this, so this is Mark, James, and obviously Dylan, as always here. Um, and we're here tonight to watch the 2018 World Championships, which James actually played in. Um, Mark, I didn't play. Myself. I did what I'm doing tonight. You didn't play? No, I I sat and drank water and clapped and handed out bottles. I, head, che- well, man. head cheerleader. Oh, you was there though, weren't you? You was on the bench. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. All right. A lot of this. <laughs> he had blisters on his hands, but it was from clapping, right? <laughs> nah, to be fair, like... Sorry, um, Jack. Enjoy- you and George were the only ones that consistently came off the bench. Nah, I wouldn't say I consistently did anything, but thanks. I, I had a couple of... I think I averaged six minutes for the tournament. Like, <laughs> six a game. That's because cool. I played 25 yeah, like in two blowouts. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, it was a good experience. Played... I wouldn't change it for the world. You played against Spain, though, and that was the closest game of the whole, of the whole thing, yeah. I think. That was like... Five yeah, I got a handful of minutes maybe. in it. Yeah, handful of minutes in a handful of games. Um, yeah, obviously very grateful for the experience anyway. And I wouldn't change anything because we probably wouldn't have won if I played more. So, cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, Dylan must have searched hard for that Sorry. highlight that you put on Instagram then. You must have searched all the games yeah. for that. <laughs> no, Do you not think I, Dylan I like commented and... Oh, sorry, say again, James. I was saying, do you not know? Do you not think Dylan sits and commentates and makes notes of all the cool stuff he says so that he can go back? <laughs> um, Chat. What yeah, do we have to oh, watch our language on this stream? Uh, depends what sort of person we're going to come across as. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, so uh, no, Rupert, really. Rupert, I'll withhold. Rupert does not. Rupert does not like swearing, and he would prefer us not to. So right, okay. I will that. withhold okay. the joke I was going to make then. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, awesome. Rupert, if you could just get the game going, if that's all right, please. Mark, your hair's awesome, by the way. Oh, cheers, man. Yeah, it's, yeah definitely got that M and M. This stream is actually doing it justice because <laughs> I've been it like I dyed it blonde and it was like really silvery, and then you have to use that like special shampoo which is like purple in color and it works for like 95 percent of my hair and there's just a small patch that it dyes pink every time i wash it but you can't really tell on here so it's it's all been worth it as long as it turned out well on this stream that's what matters (laughs) well it did for me anyway (laughs) what a setup by the way like live streams Nice job, Rupert. Never mind, Jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice job, Rupert. Yeah. I don't know why I'm here either, James. I'm if a... I'm honest, <laughs> Rupert doesn't seem to let me. No, you're here. You're here. You're here for the. You're here for this bit. I'm just saying, like when in me and Mark's podcast, like we don't do any of the bit beforehand. We just come on and muck around. So that's what I'm here yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, good. We'll do your job then. I'm sure you will do it well. Perfect. Can I just ask? Can I? Um, this is like a total tech question rather than anything basketball related. Can I get rid of my little tile of my own face because it's taken up a yeah. disproportionate amount of the screen? Nah. Oh. How do I Keep get rid it. of Yeah, you thing? can. If you press oh, there it is. I've got rid of it. It's, it's, it's yeah, all good. Yeah. I've got it. I've got it. I've figured it out. That degree in software engineering has been worth it. <laughs> right. I can, I, I can see the game now. Hey, so oh bad. my Pre- god. Pre- 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 precursor to this game, Harry's great. And I've yeah. taught him yeah, everything. Harry is fantastic. Since we were nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harry's yeah, Mark, phenomenal. God. Harry has about five they can't stop that moments in this game. He's good for yeah, a couple of games no team, matter what, but he has like five in here. On a team of on a team of the best chair defenders in the entire world. 
best collective chair skills probably of any national team anywhere. And there's at one point where five of them together can't stop him. And he's <laughs> not even got any legs. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say can he wiggle his toes though. I'm glad we're I'm glad we're taking this over already. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. If we're going to use the audio for this podcast, it's got to be mainly about us. <laughs> oh, yeah, you boys do your thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone watching this, make sure that you listen to it purely in audio form with any sort of <laughs> video to watch with it in a couple of days when we get our fingers out and release it. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, this is weirdly one of the things I remember about this game is Jared is like lights out for about the first eight minutes. And it always feels like he has 16, yeah. but I think he has eight points and they're all in the first few minutes of the game. Yeah, he scores eight of their first ten, because it's like, and that yeah, end, you've kind of got to give something. Like, I was watching yeah, it be like, oh, God. Right? I don't I don't know about that. They have a one on the floor. I'm not giving... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd say <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, he can know. shoot and he can play like he's... Yeah. But, but you can't, you can't like... force their one... You can't force their one to beat you because they just don't put him in positions where he'll shoot the ball ever. Like, yeah, they have enough spacing around him that they never really have to try and rely on their fifth option. Yeah. Okay, now they all move so fast. Oh, man. It's... I always think it's nuts watching because Lee and George both do the same thing where they just push the floor on this team and it's always like you wouldn't think watching the USA you think they would be able to pick big guys up full court against 90% of teams in the world which I think they can and you know you realize how lethal our bigs are when like this team can't pick them up full court and do anything about it yeah they just go, man. Like they just like we just get out nice and yeah, early, get a good position, and then everything else goes from there. Like doesn't matter if the ball doesn't come when... in, you've got good, you've got good position. I'm gonna say it's easy when Lee turns his back on rebounds like that and <laughs> just heads up. <laughs> Dylan, so how come quick. they didn't put you out to commentate this game originally? Because they oh, had two oh Americans commentating the final. Right. Oh, why have you asked this, Mark? But don't even get on, I always want to know. Right, so basically, oh, no. is, um, I, after the women's <laughs> final the day before, um, I thought we all arranged um, who was commentating on the final. So, um, I, I, I thought going into the final day, I would literally just be on the final with Vanessa. And then Vanessa and Ben yeah. would do the fifth, fifth place game. And Vanessa and Mark would do the bronze. But then, so I am. Um, this is probably the one of the worst deci worst decisions I've ever made in my life. So I um, <laughs> went to the. That bed must be up against some fairly strong competition. <laughs> yeah, I went to bed that <laughs> night and uh, and uh, because I was I was knackered, I just stayed in bed all day until the final. <laughs> Without realizing that the guys had a meeting in the morning, and basically uh, Mark um, complained that he wasn't on the final, and he had his whole like media company there and everything. So like oh, man, that's he basically that's... whined and complained like a bitch. And basically, when I got to the arena, <laughs> really? um, I should have. Oh, sorry, sorry for swearing, but basically <laughs> he whined and complained, and then so I basically should have just told him to to like bugger off because he wasn't I'll be honest Mark wasn't very good at all and he wasn't willing to learn like at all so what is it? tell us how um, you really yeah, feel like, no, I'm yeah honestly, stop honestly, pulling the punches but, Dylan come on man Ben was willing to learn and Vanessa was Vanessa was at the best out of all of us so there was no question why nah. Vanessa was on there because he was you hear that Joe uh, Ben like, <laughs> oh shit well to be fair though, right, Joe language. would have got on the final. Oh, yeah. Hey, Joe Steve would have got on the nah, final I... if, um... 
I, I think Dylan Cummings is the best wheelchair basketball commentator in the world and the best wheelchair basketball journalist. Just, Dylan, you're at the forefront of wheelchair basketball media in every way, and I, I would die for you. <laughs> Good, mate. Cheers. But yeah, like, he's also uh, yeah. like got the best range for a one pointer in the UK, apparently. Oi. Um, best range? Oh, um, yeah, definitely, mate, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cameron Campbell. You Knight, st- calling it. Are you still. Oh, yeah, Are you still doing stuff for Rob, Dylan? Yeah. I am, mate, yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I completely forget that Rolt is a thing because. <laughs> I only ever used to get the links on Facebook and stuff, and I don't use it anymore. So I just like every now and then people mention oh, articles great. I've read, and I have to get, I have to go back and like end up reading two months worth of roll articles at a time. Nice. Well, I, Phil comes I out firing read, in this game. Read them, boys. It means a lot. <laughs> no worries. Wow. Love you, Dylan. Now that um, I think that mad fadeaway that Phil had on the other baseline a while ago. <laughs> would get yeah. anyone going wouldn't it like that was that was nuts Big. you can see him turn to the bench and say something afterwards as well it's great that's what it's all about did you have a yeah, good party you're not here for... <laughs> um i was in bed by half 11 honestly uh, i True. i'm not even yeah, no it was discussed. unbelievable yeah dylan I'm not even you're the dis- reason i went to bed <laughs> Oh wow, no, I saw how Dylan was doing it at 11.30 and I was like, this is, do you ever get you're at a party and you're like, this is going to go downhill from here? So I was just like, yeah, yeah that'll do me. I just, I wanted to, to be honest, I wanted to, I wanted to remember it and I wanted to not die on the plane the next day. So I was, yeah, because you got to think the game wasn't that late. So you have a good bit of celebrating all day. So yeah, I didn't want to be one of the people with this, like a really sore head the next day. So I had a couple of drinks and a good time so yeah no i, I think because people kind of split up in different directions at that point so you're not with the full 12 anymore so it's kind of mm-hmm. people do what they want at that point which is lovely because hamburg's obviously yeah. a big city and there was plenty of different yeah. stuff to do for whatever people fancied but no that Go was on. it was good fun i bet i love saying i think the Blondie. Blondie. Yeah, Sam and Brian's unbelievable. I don't know if can... In general, I agree. I don't know if you can call that hustle because Jared just flipped himself out backwards because he was stuck. <laughs> yeah. No, Jack, I was saying, the. I think the coolest thing about um, after the game was instead of having the traditional like banquet where you all sit down and have a like a dinner and it's all a bit posh and weird, like they made it yeah. into like a festival type thing. They had like different like food trucks and like a live cool. band up on a stage. Like it was really cool. It was all outdoors and everyone was kind of mixing, which I thought was class. Jesus, what a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Phil really got going. Yeah. Everything. I, ju- I just imagine, because it's Germany, I imagine they're all like the celebrations end and that as soon as it's like the trophy being lifted, I imagine the German organizer just like, right, you can go home now. He's <laughs> sweeping up behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, good finish. Right. No, no, it was really cool. Brian Bell. That was one of the best weekends best. of his life. Say again, sorry. Mm. I think Dylan said the world was one of the best weekends of his life. Weekends? It was, uh, no, no one had a great time. Well, no one didn't get commented about two days of like it. It was like a two-week tournament. <laughs> say again, say again. Best weekend Mark? of his life, and the final was on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know what I mean. The event. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, it was unbelievable. It was well put together. and Yeah. What's the score at this point? Have we got the little widget for the score on it? That's a good point. Not a clue. It's underneath It's underneath point. where we all are, I Very... believe. This is what it's I, I think. I think Harry hits that shot and then I think he hits the next one and the same one yeah, again he's the, the next exact same. one after yeah two um, free throw line two 15 footers in a row that's like alright cool because they, <laughs> they were giving him the same treatment that you guys gave Jared effectively yeah but yeah, yeah here we go same thing 
Yeah. Yeah. Do you think when you're defending against Harry and you play him to let him shoot and then he hits a couple, is it like in like scary movies when they realize that the the sort of the monster can also fly? Or they're like, oh no. Like it, what what are we doing? Yeah, like done? In, in every apocalypse movie ever where the artificial intelligence is like becoming self aware. <laughs> yeah. Nerd reference. Um Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's w- weird though, because I... that's one of the things I remember about this game is Harry hitting those two. But I don't think he takes another shot from range for like the rest of the game. Because he. I think he has they... one or two. The US put the press on, fat, and he like roasts the press. Yeah. Basically. But I don't and think. That's the thing, he... if you're beating a. Pr- Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was saying, I think that that's the thing. If you don't, like, if you beat a press, you're probably going to get all the way to the basket if you do it right. Or you're going to get a pretty good yeah. look, not from 15 feet, if you properly beat yeah. a very aggressive press. Yeah, that's true. He he had little streaks like this whole tournament, though, because if you go back and watch the Germany game, maybe? Yeah. They... Harry hits, like the first hits like two baseline shots and one from the opposite elbow and Germany have a timeout and you can hear, hear the coach saying in what well I assume it's what he's saying but he's like Harry's the jump now but I don't think he like doesn't I don't know if it's just part of how the game flows or whatever but he doesn't really look to go back to it again it just it's like right I've hit a couple they're scared of me now let's see if we can get away without having to use this yeah, like, yeah, there's there's a lot to be said for, yeah. okay, this is what they're jumping, keep putting the ball back there, but then also, yeah. if you've established yourself as enough of a threat that they're paying attention to you, then you can just start moving the ball wherever you want. It's also funny that Harry's hit a couple in a row now, and they're like, right, we need some double amps as well. Let's bring Trevor <laughs> on and Aaron Gouja. Yeah. Oh, no. And that's Aaron Gouja. I think that's Aaron Gouja's one made basket for this entire game. And he makes it within yeah. like two minutes. Two minutes, like ten yeah, seconds. There's or always a th- yeah, there's always a thing when that happens where you come on, you hit a shot straight away, and you're like, oh, here we go. And then you have two <laughs> points. Like, you just think, you're like, hey, I'm 100%, and therefore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Ben, hit your first one. You're like, hey, this is, must be what Lou Williams feels like all the time. This is the best. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you boys love NBA. Is the, uh, what's going on with the NBA at the moment? It's coming back um, on the 31st of July, isn't it? or 30th, I think, now? 30th of July now, yeah. Um, well, it looked like it was going to come back, and then some group of the players got together and said they weren't sure if it was the best thing to be doing, what with everything that's going on in the States at the moment, with the protesting mm-hmm. and the whole... Um, yeah kind of Black Lives Matter movement and Mm. I think basically the players are agreeing that the NBA will come back on the condition that they that the NBA gives them some kind of platform to be activists at the time Um, so they get to do interviews before games or like promote the whole racial equality thing as much as they want to and as long as they're allowed to do that I think the games are going to go ahead that's really cool that they've kind of use their leverage to be like, all right, we'll play, but we're going to speak because yeah. I've seen a lot of yeah. like, I've seen a lot of people being like, shows... oh God, it's going to be about this. And it absolutely should. Yeah. And it shows how progressive the yeah. NBA is as a group, man, because look at like Kaepernick yeah. in the NFL was a one man protest. And he all of a sudden has gone from being like a possible hall of fame, American football player to no team in the world wants him. And it's all political. <laughs> Like, it's yeah. Trayvon's sick, man. Ooh. Um, Trayvon is unbelievable. Yeah, so... Yeah, Trayvon did yeah. move. Oh. Him and Harry him okay. and Harry together in that corner just there. I ca- kind of feel like the other eight guys on the floor should be like, hey, should we just clear out and let these two go one-on-one for a bit? That would never happen, but I would definitely watch. What do you boys think of one on one? 
Yeah, like one on one challenges. Do you think it's wheelchair or not? Like, I think games. it sucks in the wheelchair game. Especially for anything yeah. under two points. Yeah, I think you could, <laughs> you could maybe. I think you can get. I think basically the line is anyone who can shoot a post up effectively probably gets a go at it. But there's <laughs> like so much. There's. There's so much like you could never have like me and Dylan oh, playing one on one. Yes, yeah, you know, like smoking no. mark. That's why. <laughs> Oi, <Oh>, language. Because <laughs> Dylan doesn't Sorry. move. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think yeah, I it's think like, it says yeah. a lot about one on ones. Sorry, I'm lagging. I'm like two seconds behind. I've interrupted people and I don't even know. <laughs> um, no, go ahead. It's fine, man. Yeah. No, I think there's a thing of like, if you look at one-on-ones in the wheelchair game, the fact that the only one-on-one stuff that I've pe- seen people post on Instagram that I've ever cared about is like Pat Pat Steve Anderson up. and Steve Serio, which are like two of the most highly skilled players yeah. in the world. Yeah. And like, that's, that's the bar it. for me to care, kind of. And even then, yeah, it's yeah. taking like a load of dribbles and then it, yeah. yeah if man. players... Yeah. If players number seen... one and two in the world want to go one on one with each other, then I'll watch it. Anything short of that, I don't think I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, I've Agreed. seen Pat play one on one against an AB player and hit a fadeaway. It's ridiculous. I'll, I'll need to find the video. <laughs> uh, I've seen it like I've seen it like That's a ridiculous. year ago, and I, I just remember I couldn't believe it. Like it just incredible. playing one on one against an AB guy is easy because they just don't want to put their feet in the way of your wheels. Or they feel guilty defending you. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you're to play one on one with an able bodied person, do you reckon they. Sorry, my audio cut out for a second there. Um, yeah, if you play one on one with an AB, do you reckon that they will jump on your shot fake? Uh, some do. I I'll play AB. Through them. But... I played against one guy, that a guy called Carlos. Um, <laughs> he actually bounced the ball off my forehead. <laughs> and then ran out of it. <laughs> oh, no. I've actually got it on video as well. Um, oh, man. Sick. I'd be deleting that video if I were you. No, I've slowed it down. <laughs> it up a bit. It's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> and then another time I played him in the park, um, I, had, I, got, I managed to get a deal off him. But then, then he just... They can, if they want to stop you, they can stop you. Like, it's just, there's no, there's no yeah. fun. Especially a one, fat one pointer as well. Like, <laughs> I don't know yeah, I think, I think that's the thing. Like, you've seen Pat score against an AB guy, but was the final score 21 2? Because it's just, there's no way to properly contest any shots. Like, yeah. you have to just let people shoot. And if, like, if that guy couldn't yeah. score against even the best wheelchair player ever, that guy's just a below average basketball player yeah. at a recreational level. Because there's that other thing of like, like decent level, like decent level able bodied players can all shoot the life out of it for wheelchair basketball standards. Like, oh yeah, it's mm. ridiculous. Man. You see it with like the number of people who are like minor injuries who come into the wheelchair game and play as four and a halves or whatever, and are instantly yeah. like the best shooter in their entire club or whatever else. And they yeah. have no idea how to move the chair or anything. We lost a Euroleague game yeah, like to a big Pete. Russian team who had one player. Because they're all giant when as well. They probably used to be in like, probably used to Sorry. be in like mid height as well. I think that's the thing. Yeah, that's true. But it's like um, if you watch Haluski with Germany, he, I think he's better now. But I think we played. Thuringen at Euroleague ages ago when he was pretty new and he would just like post up behind the screen which is like a difficult shot for most nice finish um, nice. it's a difficult shot for most wheelchair players because of the range and stuff but for an able bodied guy that's like you have the most time in the entire world because <laughs> you don't have to think about shooting it within your jump or like with someone jumping at you or whatever you can literally take all the time you need yeah, it's like hitting pause. <laughs> Everyone else has to freeze and you just get to take a take an open look. And there's a thing of like, right, so if I'm taller than this person, they just can't contest my oh. shot. Is that right? Like, ooh. Yeah, that's what I always think. Yeah. 
I think you see it in like the way they read the game as well. Like we have Jason Kennedy, who we all probably know on this call, and I don't know who's listening, yeah. but unbelievable. The, yeah, like he played, he played like high level able bodied basketball in Ireland on his feet. So he was about he's about six foot six one maybe, and that's obviously yeah. very small for the running game. He was a point guard, so mm-hmm. like on his like in his chair, he's a forward who can shoot it and he can like make reads. Harrison. It's, yeah, it's, funny, it's funny that you said it's funny that you said high level able bodied basketball player and then had to qualify that with in Ireland. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like be, it's like being the most handsome man in the Burns unit. <laughs> <laughs> but just further goes to prove my point that he was like a point guard at like the highest oh, level oh. in a non basketballing oh, country that. and can just shoot the life out of it. Yeah. Have you got a replay button, um, Rupert? That was sick. I know you haven't. I, don't, I shouldn't keep under that pressure. That was nice. <laughs> that was so... Yeah. That was so scrappy. Yeah. Simon, yeah Brown's, Simon Brown's pretty good in this game. He... Yeah. Like, he had a smash the tournament. I think it's... Not... It's nuts that when you look at the guys on the floor, I think the USA would be hoping to make either Harry or Simon beat them. And then mm. it's like mid or sorry, late second quarter and they probably have fourteen points between them at this stage. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's Simon was unbelievable. Oh, they did good like... job. He took a few dodgy shots there, didn't he? Well, yeah, not dodgy. Yeah, I know man, he was keen. Yeah, a bit shot happy. Game off. Yeah, like to me, <laughs> I I I always think that Simon Brown does stuff that takes you by surprise. Like, like I, I can oh, never gosh. predict what Simon Brown will do. If that makes sense. Yeah, he's just a yeah, really really like smart him. player. He tends to just tends to do the right thing all the time. Like, really yeah, knows what he's, he's a, doing all the time. But he's like a rare mix of you tend to think like smart players are guys who have the ball in their hand all the time and like see no, passes no. that other people don't see but he's like a, probably the world's smartest hustle guy I guess yeah like off he's the like ball the, player oh yeah yeah yeah, exactly. oh, yeah he's the, like his cuts the and his off the ball guy yeah his cuts and, and his like picks five, and his defensive reads rebounds so. a game yeah Jared's money hmm I hey, bet that James, you guys should sign him up for another year. Say again, Jared. It was about Jared when the game finished, and I was like, we lost, but I had a pretty good game, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, You're right. I don't know that if that comes matters. into it when you lose a Worlds final. Yeah. I uh, know, I'm only joking. It's just funny. He had a, he had a, it was a decent game, man. He was yeah, a nice he guy. It, yeah, obviously. Actually, if you was look a, at. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, obviously, he was at Grand Canaria a couple of years before I got there, and like a lot of a lot of people said, a lot of people like him over there said he was great the whole time he was there. Obviously, I've watched the yeah. games he was like he can play, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was good when we played them at Euro. Oh, right, right. Yeah, he swapped him there. <laughs> that was a nice that. Day, but Lee was in the way. Oh. Stick to shooting from the wings, son. It, like you say though about him having a good game it's kind of nuts that basically everybody no on the everybody on the floor here there's nobody that you would look at apart from like maybe Gouge later in the game and be like man they've had a nightmare because I don't think Serio has a great game overall but he never seems to there's never a point where you're like Serio is just having a shocker right here mm. Yeah, I don't remember anyone that from the end of the game, but yeah, you're right. I don't think anyone sticks out as like, oh, this is why they lost. They're like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And li- I I think it's because it's in the second half because George comes in and puts up basically a point a minute for however long yeah. he's in the game. But Lee's actually had 17 a great points game in point. 17 minutes. Oh, I remember him saying that. Yeah. Like yeah. Six. I think it was seven minutes and 17 minutes, 15 seconds. Actually. Is that... <laughs> but... 
Is that what he's is that what he's got tattooed on him in Latin? <laughs> no, I don't. And I don't think it's Latin. Oh, is it not? I think it's Japanese. No. They're all the same. Uh, uh, I don't know, he's, he's got a couple of tattoos. Right? Well, he's got an Instagram selling trainers at the moment. I bought some oh, trainers yeah. off it. Sneak stash. Yeah. Give it a follow. Shameless plug. Nothing to do with me. I just like Apple and Friends out. What did you get? <laughs> just some night trainers. Just some white night trainers. They're nice though. Nice. Um, just yeah. pretty plain trainers, but yeah, I like them. Yeah. No, he's I got love some that good stuff on got... there. He's. Sorry, good. No, that was me done. Sorry, I think I'm like, I think my, I think I'm lagging by about two seconds by the signs of things. It's fine, man. Terrible Wi-Fi. Sorry. Oh man, <laughs> Brian Bell is oh, lazy. incredible. <laughs> James, tell us about Belfast, hand. man. What's going on in Belfast with uh, the Knights and um, like Paul McKillop and Matt Rolton? Like, you guys do some cool stuff out uh, there. What's going on? Uh, what about them? I don't know. I've been back here for two days and I'm not allowed to uh, leave for two weeks, so um, I haven't seen anyone yet. They are. Um, they were in prep. I think they might have gone down. I don't remember how the league finished because I know it finished early. Um, yeah. yeah, all still playing. Paul McKillop coaching the team. Uh, Matt's still far too fast. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't seen a lot of them. I've been I've been just trying to follow them on. Knights have been doing a lot of cool stuff. Like yeah. at the start of this whole COVID thing, they donated a grand of club money to food shelters. So that was a pretty classy move. So I just kind of I just see the good stuff they yeah. put on Facebook. I don't I don't really yeah. really stay too involved because it's hard to do from across across the water that's yeah. a terrible yeah. excuse how dare Agreed. you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, try my, I try my best jack, jack you can't say that you set your club up in essex and then went to hanover before the season <laughs> started <laughs> well i actually set the club up when i was playing in germany and then i come in raden and then come back oh did you oh and well that's went to hanover. <laughs> Cool. That is You're right, better. that does make more sense. You showed me. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone see what... Was it GB up by three at halftime? I don't know. I think, I think it was... Um... Rupert, is it possible to move the uh, square to a different part so we can see the score? If you can hear us. If that's possible. I hope he's gone for a cup of tea. <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> I'm gonna say, if he has gone for a couple of cup of tea, I'm gonna get all my swear words out right now. <laughs> That's how you'll know if it if if it just gets if you just let it slip, <laughs> and you don't feel anyone being upset. Yeah. Oh, got away with it. Here we go. I don't know what it is about Brian Bell, but it's because he takes all his little unorthodox little hoists and weird style shots. Any time he just pops up a little floater like that, I'm always, there is no one else on earth that I would be convinced that is going in when he just hoists it up after a foul, but I'd never doubt Brian Bell when he just pops one of those up. Yeah, he's got like he's got like able-bodied game sort of finishes at the rim like he's got such like dexterity yeah, yeah. with his hands and ability to sort of put up weird shots and finish weird ones. It's It's impressive. Yeah, he, Super cool I always watch. think with him, it's like if it, I always wonder with my own game, like if a game situation came, would I be able to just, have I like enough familiarity with a basketball and where the hoop is that I could just throw up a shot that I'd never practiced before and have some chance? And the answer is probably no, but I feel like if you're Brian Bell, the answer is probably yes. Like you could be like, yeah. hey, have, have I practiced this? No. Can I pull this off? Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I wonder is it like is it like just having practiced so many different angles or is there just like an innate sense of knowing where the hoop is when you're that good? Cuz I don't know what that feels yeah, like, but some people might yeah, be there. It's, it's kind of the difference between like do you need the muscle memory or are you like skilled enough to just figure it out on the fly? Yeah. But it's like the same thing I always think with Steph Curry. Um, when he like 
shoots is crazy, threes off the dribble or whatever. It's like there's no way you've practiced that specific shot. Hey, we got the score. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a live stream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Put your phone away. Jack, we know you're doing a live stream, man. We've been talking to you for the last half now. <laughs> For wheelchair basketball media, where people don't answer their phones mid broadcast, follow us on bench units. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you still need to get me on that. Raw huh? coaching. This is it. This we're is going to take this. this so we don't need to talk parents, man. We're cribbing the audio from this, and we'll get both guest slots from you and Jack. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, we'll have you on for a chat if you if you still fancy it. Yeah, definitely. Say, if this doesn't put, if this doesn't put you off, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I haven't caught up on bench units since the one you done with Rose, so I need to catch up on. No, oh, oh, you come on, no, real fans only. You've missed the you've missed the Tom Smith episode, then I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to catch up on as well. Jack, Jack, you know no. you knew Tom Smith before he was a big deal. We call him Too Tall. Um, oh, I, rem I remember your story about that. Oh, hilarious! Such a toss up, but a lovely toss up. I, I, I don't <laughs> know that story. Can I hear it, please? Yes, you can. It makes us laugh every time. We're, obviously, he come and played Frederick's Outlaws. We, we're not very good, but we've done as good as we could. We got a forward yeah, right. in the form of Tom Smith. We got all excited, but. Um, made some passes and a few were a little bit too short from me. He's like, guys, just throw it anywhere. I'll catch it wherever it is. And we were like, shut up, Tom. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, I love that more than anything in the world, I love that you're an Essex boy doing an impression of Tom and you sound <laughs> more like an Essex boy. <laughs> That's the funniest thing in the whole world. I, I love him so much. Yeah, man. Um, he really... We were disappointed he left our team. We thought he was the answer. We were like, yep, this is it. We're going to make it, guys. And he's literally there for he's, like, yeah. season and gone. He's the yeah, soundest you, guy you were in like, the whole world, man. Yeah, we've got so yeah. many funny Steelers stories of like, and even just Sheffield stories in general, where he's floating around in a group of adults and he's definitely just the adult in the room. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I like Tom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like that, like that time that we had a barbecue in Mark's house and he came over and just did the whole barbecue because he's the man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. get, nice cut, but Phil. You, said, you saying he came over and did it kind of papers over the fact that the rest of us were all there before he was and realised none of us knew how to run a barbecue. And Tom, yeah. We're like, should we just wait for Tom to arrive? He'll know what to do. Just what a guy. Turns up, like, puts his hands on his shoulder, has a beer flex his tongs together to make sure they're tonging correctly oh. <laughs> and off he goes <laughs> oh man I miss Tom Smith so much yeah our favourite thing about Tom Smith is like any time Jack and Dylan any time we talk about Tom in front of his girlfriend we just overdo it with how much we love him to the point that I'm not oh. sure she likes him that much <laughs> like, oh, <sorry. laughs> she's like hey relax he's alright <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that's cool offense, there. Yeah. yeah, focus. That's what's the game. Yeah, it's so it's... funny. Whoever's watched this and we're just talking about Tom Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's deserved. That's funny. I think it's... I've only just noticed this because this is obviously a hindsight thing, but if you... Once all these guys got to Madiba the season after this the Spanish team started defending Greg a certain way where they just jumped him from the baseline and just trailed him round and tried to make him go to his left and then shoot that elbow pull up because mm. his, his left hand is obviously fairly compromised but the USA just ran that on like their last two possessions I, oh, I think I must have given unbelievable unreal he, he, he did the night bus thing, you know, in, the, in Harry Potter, where he just... <laughs> Shrink to the Do you think gut. he breathes in to get through there? <laughs> You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, many, so many times they've let 
What's the low point in yeah. his name? Is it Ian Lynch? Uh, rebound as well. Ian Lynch, Ian Lynch yeah. 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 They've let him roll so many times, X, that, like, there's just no way to get the ball to him on a team full of mids. No. Especially not with Lee kind of hovering, ready to pick stuff off. Like, we've got a lot of long George... arms in there. Yeah, I think George is George in now. Oh, yeah. sorry, yes. If, but... if the George for Yeah, no, George is, is in. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it has. Sorry. Did you Did you talk about, before the, like, in the prep for this game, James, did you guys talk about the fact that you were only going to go six or go very low into your depth? No. Because... You got you guys played the US in the group stage, right? Oh. And I don't remember it. I don't remember the rotation being as strict as it is here. Yeah, I think it was let me see, starters. We went at least sort of nine or ten. We might have yeah. We might have gone full oh. squad against them the first time. I don't remember, but like I was pretty far down the bench and I I made an appearance. I remember we ran two ones at one point. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. No, we didn't explicitly talk about who was going to play and who wasn't. No, but Fair enough. happy enough. It's a yeah, good six, no. isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad. I um, Now I just wondered, because it was like such a drastically different approach to the first game out. I didn't know if the first time was effectively like trial runs of Obviously, you don't go into the game being that, but I wonder if that was used as like a proving ground for a few of the lineups, and if the coaches thought that it was going to be this or bust. Uh, I I don't know, but it it might have been because it's worked. Such a nice part. Unbelievable! What an incredible finish from Brian Bell there. Yeah. Crazy take. He's it. got such good hands. Jake's got some maps. Like, oh. What, sorry? Oh, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, wait. Hang on a minute. Oh. You go for no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't remember what I said. Oh, Jake Williams, he's got some really bad finishes, like, uh, as a hoop, like, with his twisty hand and yeah. stuff, like, some yeah. crazy. Jake's the, like, only, Jake's the only person in the wheelchair game who's really nailed the floater, I think. Like he's uh -huh. yeah, he's got an able-bodied game style floater. I've definitely gone in my garden and tried some Jake Williams shots and just been throwing air balls over the hoop, <laughs> and then quit very quickly. <laughs> I'm gonna try what he does and quit. Yeah, yeah, putting I, up the sort of shots that he does kind of breeds confidence. Like try it mm -hmm. next time you're scrimmaging, just like play like he no. does, and all of a sudden you start making a couple. <laughs> no, no. I've done it in my garden on my own with nobody about, and it's not good news. Right? It's not a good look. So <laughs> I don't need to in the image. <laughs> a lot of a lot of knocking on your neighbor's front door, being like, "Excuse me, miss, can I have my ball yeah. back?" <laughs> yeah, they definitely don't like me. Uh, okay, this is the seventeenth time today. <laughs> that was an unbelievable foul draw from Harry on the previous. Play. Oh yeah. He's a contortionist. It's mad. Some of the. <laughs> some of the weird body control he has, and I think that just comes from a whole lifetime of just mucking around out of his chair. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, man. So, I always thought whenever we used to go anywhere and he used to hide in the overhead lockers of planes and whatever, I was like, I'm sure this body control is going to come in useful at some point. <laughs> he didn't think yeah. it would be for an actual, like, a real good use. Ooh, oh, good. <laughs> I thought that was in. Too many shots, man. That was a good. That wasn't bad shot selection, though. I know, I know, but he took too much. I think that's got to go. Yeah. Harry. Oh. That's Harry's the best. Welcome player to the Harry the getting. Here. Yeah, welcome to the Harry getting to the basket on the press section of the game. <laughs> <laughs> he just got it's hot, didn't he? It is kind of mad because that when you think about it, this is probably the only team that would ever dare press this unit. Yeah. Like, if it, I think the USA in like if you go back maybe a few years from this when it was like primarily Simon Munn and Terry they would definitely put the press out first line against that 
it's kind of mad that GB's downsized to being like effectively mids and one big in the US. And like, yeah, we'll get we'll give it a shot at pressing this. But yeah, I, I think I don't even really think other than Japan, I don't know who else in the world would even try. Yeah, the last time I played for GB against Japan was in Belgium last season and they tried pressing us and it just didn't and that was like Terry was on the floor at the time and they just couldn't hang with whoever else was there like I think we've just got enough like we always have enough pushing on the floor but like I think yeah. the USA or it's not that the USA press certain teams or don't press certain teams the oh. USA press second and fourth quarters and then they've stuck it on now yeah. because they whatever we were doing previously wasn't working like yeah. they, they press sort of they rotate at certain times and they press at certain times just without mm. any real regard for who's on the floor. I don't know if they'll do it now, yeah, but they certainly had done for a long time. It's yeah, very, think... very like able-bodied basketball-esque, like we run these rotations at this time. But, but I guess they've always had that luxury because the, up until like this tournament, there was never a team in the world that they couldn't handle on the press. Like, yeah. The worst that would ever happen if they pressed anyone would be that they would maybe break even for that quarter. Yes, Greg. Like there was... Greggy! Can, can I just quite... point out the left... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, can I just point out the left-handed hook pass from Harry, catching one hand over the top? Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Greg's actually quite quiet for this game from what? I remember because I think he he was lights out in basically every other mm -hmm. GB game this whole tournament, and he it's not yeah. like he's bad at all this game. It's like low number of shots more than anything. Sure. But I guess the other guys have been getting layups out of the press, so you probably can't complain. Yeah, well defended as well because they 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 knew what they'd seen for a full tournament. Yeah, sure. I I think thinking about this game now. I wonder if they, after Harry made those couple in the first half, I wonder if they could have put him on the wing and seen if the US would have jumped him. Because I think if you put Greg in the middle, there's no way they would have helped off where Greg was. Uh, obviously, yeah. it turns out to not matter because the game works out how they would, would have liked it to. But I just yeah, wonder I about that as a wrinkle. Thing of... Yeah, I think there's a thing of, like, there are certain guys that you move up and down in the pecking order based on who's shooting well, and then there's guys like Greg that just like, hey, number one. Like, yeah, like you're not going to stop jumping Terry if one of the Zarzuelas <laughs> starts scoring in Elunion, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, there's guys that are just we, constantly on. We always talk about this. We should, we should ask these guys. So, Jack and Dylan, this is yeah. like a... I don't know if you can call this a theory, but this is something we've tried to figure out before. So, like, most players, let's pick, like, a decent international player. So, like, Aaron Goose, for example, how many how many in a row does he have to miss before you don't worry about jumping him? I would say the number's, like, three to five, maybe. Sorry, say again. How many times? Say again. So, how if Aaron, Aaron Goose is behind the screen for, like, yeah, yeah. however many offences in a row... How many yeah. does he have to miss before you're no longer worried about jumping him? How many does he have to miss? I'd say two yeah. or three. Yeah. So it's two or three. Right. I would never I wouldn't jump so, ever. Fair enough. Yeah. So fair. if Terry's behind the screen, how many does Terry have to miss before you're no longer worried about jumping Terry? Uh, he can't guarantee that Terry will miss. Yeah, different. I'd never not jump Terry. You would not jump yeah. that uh, but that's what we're saying. Where is the number? If Terry misses, uh, like honestly, if Terry misses sixteen shots in a row, do you then assume that he's it? just something's wrong? Like I think uh, you still jump him, like mid teens. Yeah. Like... Right, he's gonna make. Well, oh yeah, it just it just it just wouldn't happen, would it? He'd be benched probably before he got. To, well, maybe he wouldn't, but he's missed sixteen nah, shots. Not only <laughs> no, but like uh, I if, if Terry missed of the. He's one of the highest again, numbers James? for that. I think he's one of the highest numbers for that question in the world. Like, if he misses if he yeah. misses eight in a row, I'm like, oh, God, as soon as he catches the ball in the three-point line for the next one. Also, what a shot by Greg. Yeah. Greg, oh, my Greg God. Greg comes on strong right here. Yeah. Dylan, what yeah, do you I think? think... Um, yeah, like, even if Teddy missed... 
I, I honestly, I can't give you a number, but even if Terry missed the entire half, the entire three, like first three quarters, I'm still jumping in the last. Yeah, I think oh, that's yeah. probably fair. I think that the like exceptional rule is that it's the guys who are good enough shooters and have enough clout within their team that they're not going to get benched for missing shots. So it's basically Terry, Gerbalak, and Adolfo Badu. Like, Gerbalak could be zero from 40, and he would his coach would be like, hey, get the ball and bring it by the screen. <laughs> <laughs> because he's his own coach. <laughs> <laughs> When do, when, do you think, when do you think Galatasaray when do you think Galatasaray are just going to give up on pretending to like pretending to like coach him I don't know like he might actually get really good coaching but it just seems like he can't and it, no matter where he is I don't know Max do you remember the other year when um, they were at our EuroLeague yes and he yeah. they lost that quarter to Lacane and he came off the his coach took him out, I think, because the game was out of reach. And he came out of the game at that point, and he picked up one of the, like, foldable plastic chairs that's courtside at the EIS, and he snapped it in half with his hands. So I'd say he's pretty <laughs> raging about getting subbed out. I'm pretty raging. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, if it... Either that or he was his own coach, and he was like, hey, sub me out, I need to snap something. <laughs> 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 I, I just find it mad how you can drop big numbers and still go outside at half time and smoke a fag and come back in and smoke <laughs> again, come back and drop more big numbers. Yeah, it's the fact that it's the fact that in that first game of Euroleague this year there were three Turkish teams. He was playing for his Turkish team yeah. against a second Turkish team and then went out and had a smoke with a load of the guys from the third Turkish team. <laughs> <laughs> like they were all like going to or coming from a game and he was at half time chatting to them. It, it's so it was so funny as well because this whole other Galatasaray, t- like everyone else on his team was, like, he was on his way out. He'd like got out of his basketball chair, into his day chair, and he's like, right, I'm off for a fag. And they're like, oh great, welcome. He's like, no, you guys stay here and shoot low. I'm gonna go smoke a fag, and we'll carry this on as we go. I just love the idea of like, what right, lads, guy. who needs who needs these ten minutes to get their shooting together? Is it me? Is it? No. Nope? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Nice finish. Big finish. Finish. Table finish and fell down. I, you don't see in any lineup fills in. You don't see him go inside off the ball a whole lot. Like I think that I don't know if that's anything GB would look at because of the they basically always play a big. But I always wonder what that would look like in other lineups that you could put fill in. Well, he's quick and he's massive, so... Yeah, I know, I'm just saying he he always has the ball in his hands, like, so much that... Like, the NBA comparison is, can you imagine if they didn't put the ball in Giannis' hands on every possession and they were like, hey, you're seven foot and faster than anybody, go and get under the basket and we'll get you the ball. Yeah, just let him run at some point, yeah. Well, he does, does occasionally, like, he's done it for Madiba this year and stuff, and occasionally, and it's, it's cool. Yeah. Like, he's always uh, really good at slipping picks. Yeah. James, that... do you think you can... Oh, I'm going to change the subject a little bit. Sorry, lads. Um, no, you're okay. Right. So, James, you know you lived in Sheffield, obviously, with the team. Just can you tell, if there are people watching, and you all lived in together as a team, and it, do you think it helped a lot to win in this game and win this tournament and the like, cohesion in your team and stuff? or? Um, yeah, I would say so. Like, there are one, two, three, four guys on the floor that were all in Sheffield. Like, obviously, there were a couple of guys that were a big part of this tournament that didn't centralize, so I wouldn't say it was, like, the be-all and end-all, but I do think there's no there's no secret in the fact that, like, a lot of the guys in this squad got together and played together all season and trained Monday to Friday together and then played in a handful of clubs. And I think it's it's no secret that it looks like we all gelled and did all right. So yeah. obviously, I'm as I said, I'm not sure if it's you couldn't say it was definitely because of it or whatever. Or if we didn't do well, you could mm-hmm. you couldn't blame it. But like, I think yeah. I think being together and getting more court time together always helps. Obviously, even if you, I think there's that, a thing of teams like like you know the wax thing. <laughs> 
No cutting out, that's exactly. I think, um, I think a big part of it is there was a bunch of, this is for me having kind of semi been around it, but because there was a bunch of young guys who were kind of ready to take the step up in the international game, it's almost like a, it's like takes a lot of the pressure off your shoulders if everyone's there getting ready to take that next step together. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. rather than if yeah. Greg had been the one person back in Sheffield and everyone else is abroad and then just comes back for camps, that doesn't feel as familiar to him at that point. That feels like you're being dropped into yeah. the middle of a brand new team. Yeah, yeah, like camps, for me, for example, I, I'd i always flown into camps from Belfast anyway, so like, camps felt like home for the first time, so I felt there's the real adjustment flying in and getting cool. used to playing that high level with that high, like the really cool um, facilities and the high level coaching and stuff. There's a real adjustment to that normally, and I felt like, I don't know about the other guys, they were probably all used to it because they'd been around for a good few years anyway, but like I felt like I didn't need to figure out camps for a day and a half when they're only three days long. So like your Monday was kind of what your first day of your week would look like most of the time anyway, mm-hmm. with just a few different faces. Obviously the level raised because like a lot of the guys that were abroad as well were like they're all great players. So you have higher level guys and it means maybe some of the guys that were coming along to the sessions that weren't being invited to camps like the level just got raised overall by the average player being better at a camp but yeah it just kind of means you don't have to figure out the dynamic of coming to like GB stuff once a month and then going back to club level and maybe yeah. relaxing a bit I don't know feel, it doesn't feel dull it doesn't like it it's the same thing you do every week yeah but I think I think that's a I big think part you of can it. tell that far I, no. I think you can tell with Harry, like, to get to what you were saying, Jack, Mm. did it help out having the kind of centralised squad? I think when you see how Harry plays here, he's, like, so much more free and Mm. kind of playing his his game that we always knew him, like me and James as the juniors, um, when we all went through it together. He's, like, playing Harry's game here rather than he was so much more of a role player when he was in the teams that were primarily the older guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, the kind of, if the pressure's off enough, like Monday to Friday in a normal week, you kind of, you just play with the pressure off all the time. You get used to that being how you play. Whereas if you go to a GB camp once a, however long, once a month, once every two months for three days, you might be tempted to go there and just play it safe. Whereas if like, like if Hodge has seen you, if Hodge has seen Harry do some mad stuff, he's more likely to be like, all right, cool. He was fine with it then. I'll see if I can do it next week when everyone's here. Yeah. 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 Who'd have called Jake Williams missing a free throw? (laughs) Me, because I've seen this 10 times, but... (laughs) (laughs) How how many times have you guys watched this? Um, Twice. Or this. I watched it when it happened. I've watched it again when Ben lived here. I think me and you have watched it again, James. Yeah. Um, I don't know, four or five maybe. Cool. Yeah. Um, I well. Nice. Yeah. Oh. George, I think comes in. And I don't think he takes a shot from outside the charge circle in his 17 minutes, but it's like. When you consider that, it's like, hey, if it was that easy, the US would just stop him getting to the charge circle. But he gets there every single time. Yeah, he just he just goes and goes and goes. Like he just shots up, rebound, ball safe. Okay, I'm I'm getting moving. He's he's unbelievable. He doesn't yeah. stop. Oh, there you go. That was the I know. Oh, past oh, it. Wow. His range. What a pass! I forgot about that. Yeah, so fast. And uh, another uh, question I've got for you, for you lads. Uh, I think six out of the six out of the twelve players on this squad went to the under under twenty two Europeans in twenty fourteen, which I know both of you you guys went to as well. 
So what has it been like for both of you guys, sort of like growing up with this team, basically? Um, I don't know. I guess you pro you probably don't think about it as much until it hits like, like you say, that's kind of a landmark moment. Is that six of those guys were in Zaragoza that time, and but then you probably don't think about it in those terms again until you see the squad listing for. Um, this tournament and it's like I guess yeah. for me it's kind of different because Harry's been my friend since we were kids so I guess I grew up with Harry more than this is a massive shot by Jake um, yeah me and Harry kind of grew up and always did our thing and then we just kind of fit in I for the life of me can't pinpoint a moment where me and James actually were like hey we're best mates now, but it's apparently has happened because I can't get rid of him. Um, <laughs> oh, but yeah, no. you just you don't really, I guess you don't really think about it until you see it in those terms that you just put it in. But it's nuts the progression yeah. of this group of guys from four years apart. Yeah, it is incredible. What's the uh, maddest Harry Brown story you've got, Mark? In bar, in terms of maddest, in, maddest in basketball terms. Yes. It's got to be that um, session that only four of us came to that he played two hours in Will Bonner's chair oh and was God, the best yeah. player there. Oh, that must have been cool. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we just went to play two on two, but his chair was locked up at the AIS, so he just jumped in the nearest chair that he could, like, that fit his lower body in it and it was like a max height chair for one of our threes and he was lights out for the entire thing um no the probably the craziest one I've ever seen and this is going back years we played a game I think it was maybe like division one or division two and it was a playoff thing and we'd played two games that day already and he hurt his back and sat out the last quarter of the middle game. And then we had whatever gold medal game it was, I think, for Division 1. So he sat out 10 minutes of the game before, got some heat treatment oh. on his back, and he, he was like, yeah, I think I'm ready to go. And he came back in, he had 35 points in that game. I was like, what, what is going on here? I've never seen anything well, like that. In, in, in three quarters? No, he, he sat out and we had another game that same day, so he had like an hour's rest after getting some heat treatment on his back. They had 35 points in the game after he'd hurt his back. Oh my god. It was nuts. Um, I think he, we must have been like 17 at the time as well, and so we were like kids going against adults there. Yeah. I always say about Harry, he's good for like, like one what is going on moment. Per game like once a game yeah. he does something completely nuts every game and he did it in the first play of the game yeah. this time but yeah he's one of those people where you what you watch him and you the stuff he pulls out and you're like it can't you can't be thinking about this quick enough to be pulling this out as it happens like but at the same time if you're doing this on instinct that's almost scarier than if you're able to think that quickly <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think, Jack. When did? Because my first memory of us, of like me and you getting to know each other, was that juniors tournament when I think you must have still been like 29 at that point because you've been the same age forever. <laughs> Sorry, <bro. laughs> um, but me and Ariel have only been like 15 at that point, so you must have been like. You came into oh. juniors late, obviously, because it was only a few years after your accident. Children. I was 18. What? You, like children. Yeah, what were your impressions of... Because he must, he must have been like 14 at that point, or 15. What yeah. were your impressions of like this crazy double amp kid who seemingly nobody uh, in the junior game could stop? Uh, yeah, these things do quick, but... I remember he stole, he stole someone's wallet out of, their, out of their wheelchair, and no one had knew it happened apart from Harry. And I was like, you, like, <laughs> yeah, that was my first impression. I was thinking, who is this crafty little bastard? Like, <laughs> and yeah. 
Um, and I vaguely remember, I went to, it was, was it in Italy? I think it might have been that Holland trip. Um, do you remember sitting, it was a tournament where Nat Craig was there. Do you remember sitting next to Nat Craig on the bus? And, uh, right. Do you remember, yeah, after the tournament, I was in the shower room, like, Harry being like someone holding one of uh, Harry's hands each and then sliding him across the shower room floor into, into something else. And I was like, <laughs> I was so new to being disabled and so new to basketball. And I'm like, is this funny or is this what, brilliant? Like, do I need to intervene? Like, do I tell someone what's going on in there? Like, I don't know what's going on here, but yeah. And I think that, yeah. Because we were sharing a room with Aaron Simmons, weren't we? Oh, I was in the room with Aaron Simmons. Um, and I remember, yeah, you kept coming in. I think yeah, Harry cut my hair as well. I think Harry cut my hair up for that as well. Yeah, I do remember that. Probably. Yeah, I'm letting some child cut my hair. I'm like, why am I doing that? <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> um, we all ended yeah. up fine <laughs> from yep. the haircuts. Yeah. That was sick, fast, bro. Not a whole lot of this game left, but there's still, like, it's out of reach for the US at this point, but every offense they run, you're like, hey, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all very direct and clean, isn't it? Like it's all it's all pretty sharp. Yeah. Do you guys reckon not sharp that... enough, obviously. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Dylan. Even when the game's out of reach, there's no off switch for both teams, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Do you think the USA have to lose the hugging this on the baseline? <laughs> One love. Um Right. Do you think after losing this game, the US come back looking any different in terms of like structure or what they do to cope with this GB team, or do you think they just double down on what they've done for the last twenty years? Um, Me or Dylan? Any, anyone? Oh, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to go first, James? All right. Um, well, no, I think if you look at Lima, they've changed lineups and change starters and it's all like their style of play is yeah. pretty similar because I don't know if you'd go out after losing one game but you know sure. um, there's Anna uh, but I I don't know I <laughs> they I think they'll, they'll just change lineups and rotations and stuff but I think they'll stick to the guns on like I feel like you don't do what you do for, like a certain way for so long without believing in it so like I don't know if we'd have yeah. changed what we yeah, did definitely. if we lost that game. Like I don't think you have. I don't think you should. If you really believe in what yeah. you're doing. Fair point. GB shot sixty percent for the game, man. Unbelievable. Hey, you guys are on my screen again. Oh no. <laughs> and then um, for like Tokyo, um, obviously we don't know for sure, but uh, it's likely that GB will have Sagar and the US will have Turek back. How much of a difference do you think those guys will make to each squad? Uh, two great players. I'll let James drop um, his bomb. Is Turek no. playing or not? I, I don't. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, How do you I, know? Well, um, I think it's likely. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but from the last time I spoke to him in Bilbao, it's it's likely that he'll he'll play. But then that's that's two great like players that can. Sorry, you cut out there. I was going to say two great players what? that. Two great players that will change any sort of team. Like you can do a lot of mad stuff with Seagar in as the big three. Like, um, they can obviously yeah, run sure. a lot of cool stuff with Josh because he's unbelievable. But yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's Seagar was back for, um the Euros in Poland last year, and they didn't change a whole lot. They just kind of put that lineup out as and when. I don't think it was featured as much as you would maybe expect it to be for a guy like Sagar to come back. I think you would have maybe thought it was slightly more high profile, but they only deployed that lineup fairly sparingly, I think. Yeah. There's Otto. Um... Right, is there anything else or you got any questions? I know you've always got thousands of questions, Dylan. Well, you did have. Um, um I'm trying to think. I know I, I, th I, I think we've pretty much pretty much covered everything, but um 
yeah, just once again, uh, thank you very much. Um, wait, actually, yeah, I do. I, I, and obviously, <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite... Man, I feel, I feel we're going to have a that. Yeah. <laughs> Controversial subject, but um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on the whole classification code debate. Oh, good question. Go ahead, Jack. It's nothing to do with me. Oh, uh, hasn't uh, David Eng's been ruled out, right? Yeah, yeah. he's... Yes. Not made it, apparently, what? yeah. Where, where did he leave George Bates? Like, what, uh, what's his disability? So I'm, no I'm not um, sure what it is medically. I'm not the expert. He, I'm staying away no. from all of this. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah, I find, I find it really weird because David Eng has obviously been to like three or four Paralympics now and it's yeah. nuts that they're like, hey, they don't count. Um, yeah, it's a bit late. Yeah, it's, it is weird. Um, I haven't really thought a whole lot about it because it will never affect me. So, mm. the, yeah, um, I haven't put too much thought into it. Need to get a, yeah. need to get a controversial four or five on here and ask them about it. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> the move. Don't Definitely don't care enough about those big idiots. Um. <laughs> get David Egg on here, man. Let's see how he feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might be a bit soon. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do yeah, that. It might dude. be a bit raw. Might be. Um, we might best leave. He's Canadian, place. man. They're all really polite. You'll be fine. Because if that, if they've taken David Eng out, that's going to rule a lot of players out. And I don't. I, I sort of willing to play and train at an elite level in a wheelchair. Like, I think you got to give them sort of props. If someone with like, well, I don't know what. Again, I don't really care too much. But if someone with like some cartilage damage, like Haluski can play. Like, there's definitely nothing wrong with him. Like, and he, <laughs> like there isn't. Um, yeah, I just want probably, people yeah, to be yeah, able to play. Like he's, 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 he's what? Yeah, nah, it's fine. Nah. Yeah, exactly. I his disagree. Knees are good, but you know, um, so that's what I mean. I think they should be allowed to play. Yeah, I just want I people to it's... be able to have access to basketball and wheelchair basketball. Like, I just yeah. want people to yeah, be able sure. to play the sport that's like done a lot for all of us. Like, I, that's yeah. my whole thing. Like, let people play. Mm. <laughs> What does Jason Kennedy yeah. like? You know. Um, yeah, exactly. He should be out of play. What look it's... what he's done for the sport, for pure passion for the sport. Like, he's one of the most influential people in like, the United Kingdom for wheelchair basketball. And if he was yeah, never allowed yeah, to play right. the sport, he would never have done anything for the sport. Like, I think it's very important. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I think almost in a way, while it really sucks for David Eng that it's happened to him, it we won't really know the full impact of it because David Eng is obviously a guy who's like at, towards the end of his career and this was probably going to be his last Paralympics, mm. I would guess. Like, So he was probably going to be off the radar after this anyway. Um, until it kind of strikes somebody who's mid-career and is living it up, I don't really know what the impact it will be, yeah. I, get, I suppose. It's tough to predict. That's what I mean, because yeah. they've done David Eng, like, and I say he's not, he's near the end of his career. Like, do you reckon if he's too, he's too big, like, that he's taking the mix? Like, too <laughs> massive. Man. He's um, a strong man by the looks of things. <laughs> yeah, he's taking the mix. Um, I, I, yeah. I'm just really, um, really worried about how many people it'll affect. Like, I just hope that, uh, I don't know, it makes me feel nervous. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, this isn't going to change anything. Man. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry, Dylan. You'll still get classified. You're safe. You've no reason to be nervous. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. I hope they bring in a 0 0.5 classification, but then it'll cause a lot of things. People will have to, the whole classification will need to be looked at again, but a 0 0.5 classification. Now, the watch you shoot is going to put you up to two. <laughs> Oh, yeah. There is oh, yeah. there is no way they will bring it in 0.5. No way on earth. Because no one will want to be it. Not everyone will be like, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Is that what you, do you want to be the 0.5, Dylan? Is that what you're saying? You like you want to rock out? Just, I do, I do, because I'll be honest with you boys, I do, yeah. <laughs> Still, uh... then, then you can play me play me a one and three, four and a half, so it'd be un unbelievable. You're right. <laughs> uh, good match um, there, Dylan. Unbelievable. 
Yes, well, you've been saving that one up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should get off him before Jack has a bloody <laughs> Uh, any, any other questions, anybody? Uh, um, no, uh, but thank thank you uh, guys for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been really fun. So um, yeah. yeah, it's been cool. I've thanks. enjoyed this. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been fun. We finally got it. Thank... We've got the. And thanks for bumping Terry at the last minute so we could get James on because. Oh shit! Was... Yeah, I for... didn't I, bump I, for... it. I... He didn't reply to Rupert. Um, in time I, I, or something, there's a miscommunication. I forgot yeah, to kick off for the fact that I was second choice. Well, <laughs> yeah, see, fifth choice. See what, human. what I actually thought was I didn't want to steal the audio for this to use the podcast if it was just me on here, but I was like, if we can get James on here, this is a pre packaged podcast ready to go. So I just stole Terry's phone so that he couldn't speak to Rupert. And then I was like, hey, James will be up for this. He's got nothing else to do. <laughs> You're right. Fuming. Absolutely fuming. Oh. But anyway, yeah, this has been really cool. This is the, the High Rollers bench units crossover that no one asked for. So <laughs> yeah. developed, developed this that, morning. That's not, that's not true. Both Dylan and Jack asked for this. Yes. Yes. You just want well, to do our podcast and plug your own. So definitely not. I don't care enough about anything to plug anything. Um... <laughs> Bless it's High Rollers. Yeah, unless you can see the logo behind me, whichever side it is, this side. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Is that painted on your wall? <laughs> no, it's a banner from the for the tournaments, but they've all been cancelled because oh, cool. of Corona. So it's uh, now me out. What's Corona? <laughs> COVID-19. Are you joking? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, before we go, can we just say, obviously, a happy birthday to Harry as well. We've got... Yeah, right. One of his good friends, and obviously so is James as well. I don't know if he likes you or not, Dylan, but um, <laughs> we're here. Everyone likes it. <laughs> so, yeah, happy birthday, Harry. Ask I hope him. you had a good day, if you watch this. Happy, happy birthday, Harry. Harry. I hope this right, Harry, good, watch this. I... <laughs> cool, yeah, how, how human are you going to be, Jack, if he doesn't watch this? Okay. <laughs> <Don't care. Jack> who? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and if Courtney is watching, does this mean I now don't have to do that silly video? Um, <laughs> No, I'm joking. Yes, um, this is a very, this has been a very long, silly video. This this is funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, think, I think to be honest, we could probably just if we were to cut this really vigorously, we could just about scratch together some kind of sincere message that's something to do with Harry. Because for most of it, we were talking about Brian Bell or whoever else. But like, hey, Harry, happy birthday, man! Here's a video of us yeah. admiring Brian Bell. Yeah. <laughs> And Tom else. Smith. <laughs> yeah, Tom Smith. <laughs> yeah. Real legend. He'd be on board with that. Happy birthday, Tom Smith, whenever it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely time to go. You two are going to get weird. I can sense it. Right, cool. let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks very much for time. having us. Yeah, Peace cheers, guys. guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for Rupert as well. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, cheers Rupert. Cheers, Rupert. Look, right. look after right. yourselves.